welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Melissa. And in today's video, we're going to dive into a critical part of wound care, debridement. If you've ever wondered what debridement is, why it's so important, and the different types used for wound healing, you're in the right place. So what exactly is debridement? In simple terms, debridement is a process of removing dead, damaged, or infected tissue from a wound. Think of it as cleaning up a wound and giving it the best possible chances of healing properly. If you leave dead tissue on a wound, it can slow down the healing process, increase the risk of infection, and it may even lead to complications. Debridement helps create a healthy wound bed, which is essential for promoting new tissue, growth, and speeding up the wound healing process. Now let's talk about why debridement is so important. There are a few reasons why debridement and removing tissue is vital for wound healing. One, it prevents infection. So dead tissue can become a breeding ground for bacteria, leading to infections that can make the wound worse. Two, it encourages new tissue growth. By clearing away the old tissue, it allows healthy tissue to form and the wound to heal faster. Three, it reduces inflammation. The presence of necrotic tissue can cause prolonged inflammation, which can further delay the wound healing process. Number four, it improves the effectiveness of other treatments. So debridement can help other wound care treatments, such as dressings and antibiotics, work more effectively. Think of necrotic tissue as a cover over the actual wound that you're trying to heal. So we have to remove that cover to actually be able to treat the wound. Next, let's take a closer look at the different types of debridement. So there's several different types of debridement. Each has its benefits in certain situations. So here are the most common ones. First up, we have autolytic debridement. So this method allows the body's natural enzymes and moisture to break down and remove dead tissue. It's one of the most natural forms of debridement, and it typically involves covering the wound with a moisture retentive dressing, like a hydrocolloid or hydrogel. Autolytic debridement is ideal for patients with severe wounds, and it's more comfortable option since it doesn't require specialized tools. However, it does take time, so it's best suited for chronic wounds. Next is mechanical debridement, which involves physical removal of dead tissue. There's a few different ways of mechanical debridement. We have wet to dry dressing, irrigation, or ultrasound. The most common method is wet to dry dressing, where you apply wet dressing and remove it once it dries out, pulling off the dead tissue in the process. This is very painful. Then we have enzymatic debridement. So this method uses topical enzymes like collagenase, to break down necrotic tissue. This is a very targeted approach and it can be a good option for more stubborn wounds where autolytic debridement is taking too long. Enzymatic debridement is usually safe for the use on various types of wounds and it can be an excellent option for patients who need faster debridement. Then we have surgical debridement. It is the most invasive type and involves the use of surgical tools to remove dead tissue. It's usually performed in a hospital or clinical setting. These wounds are usually large, severely infected, or not responding to other methods. While it's the quickest method, surgical debridement can be painful, and it carries more risks because it involves cutting into the tissue. It's typically used when other debridement methods aren't enough. Finally, we have biological debridement or maggot therapy. Yep, you heard that right, maggots. So we use sterilized maggots to consume the necrotic tissue and clean the wound. It may sound a little gross, but it's actually a very effective way to promote healing, particularly for hard to heal wounds like diabetic ulcers. Maggot therapy is particularly helpful in wounds that have a lot of necrotic tissue and need constant cleaning. So when is debridement necessary? So debridement is indicated when there's a lot of necrotic tissue, heavy bacterial load, or if the wound isn't healing properly. It's often used in chronic wounds like diabetic foot ulcers, pressure ulcers, and venous leg ulcers. If you notice that a wound's not healing or showing signs of infection, debridement might be needed to get the healing process back on track. To wrap things up, debridement is a critical part of wound healing that helps to prevent infection, reduce inflammation, and encourage the growth of new tissues. Whether it's done autolytically, mechanically, enzymatically, surgically, or biologically, debridement is a step that can make a huge difference in the patient's recovery. 
I hope this video gave you a better understanding of why debridement is so important, the different types of debridement. But that's all I have for this video, guys, and I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now. Don't forget to visit my website, thewoundconsultant.com, for all your wound care needs. Whether you're seeking professional wound care consultations, access to high quality supplements for wound healing, holistic healing, digital resources, informative books, or high quality wound care supplies, we have everything to support you. Whether you're dealing with a wound or you're a healthcare professional, there's something for everyone. Visit today and take the next step in effective wound care.